Hello, my name's Jamie, and welcome to this tutorial. Um, if you just noticed the little introduction animation um, that played, um, and you were wondering how I made that, uh, this is the video for you. Um, just, this is just going to be a basic introduction on how to do some uh, motion graphic work in Blender. Um, so if you're thinking um, you have to stick to like Adobe products um, in order to achieve that sort of stuff, um, you definitely don't. Um, you can Blender is an animation program, so it's perfectly capable of doing some of those uh, looks, and uh, with just a few simple techniques, uh, we can get that look going. Um, if this is your first time in 2.8, I'm currently in the beta, um, and um, just for reference, um, the date of the version that I'm using is on the 25th of January. Um, I believe the tie the day that. I've downloaded it was actually the 26th, um, but that shouldn't make too much of a difference. It should work fine. Uh, we're not doing any um, anything that I don't think is going to change during development. Um, so like I was saying, yeah, if it is your first time, um, it's probably worth um, setting the key bindings to default um, because the key bindings are different between 2.79 and 2.8. You will find some inconsistencies um, that can, you know, be a bit of a hurdle um, to get used to. Um, so I do recommend um, because you might be trying to learn the the two point eight key bindings um, to go into File and then um, Load Factory Settings, um, and that and then say Start Up File afterwards. Um, so hit the Load Factory Settings and then go File Save Start Up File, and that will bake in um, the hotkeys and everything without you having to um, try to figure out how to fix them um, because I did notice when I've, I've got 2.79 regularly installed um, 2.8 the um, the zip file that you download it was picking up the old um, key bindings um, from the old default file um, so um, that's just something worth mentioning to get to make sure that you you get your your hotkeys the same because I will be telling you most of the buttons that I do press. Um, so to get started, uh, we're going to want um, a text object um, that we're going to reveal um, using some animation um, and some planes. Um, so we'll start off by creating a text object. I'm just gonna so left click to select um, and then X and delete. And I'm going to shift A and add in a plane. I'm going to, um, no, I'm not going to add in a plane yet, sorry. We're going to add in a text item. Okay, that's better. Um, and then hit R, X, and 90 on the numpad and hit enter. So pretty similar to how um, Blender usually works. Just the main thing is that currently it's um, now left click to select things, um, which if you've ever used a different um, 3D software package or a computer in general, it's very quickly, easily um, able to change your old habits. Um, my old habit was obviously right-clicking everything to select. Now that brings up a different menu, um, which you know isn't uh, obviously the original behavior that you're expecting, um, but it does mean you can right-click um, and it gives you a contextual menu so you can do uh, different things. We're not going to use that yet, but we will actually uh, use that during this tutorial. Um, so with the text object, um, we'll just put in some text. Um, we'll go 2.8 uh, um, baby. Yeah, 2.8 baby. We're in 2.8 baby. Um, and so we'll go to the um, object data panel here. Um, because we've got a text object selected, it is actually um, a little text icon. Um, with fonts, um, you probably want to put in a custom font. Um, you just need to click this folder um, and load it in from a file on your computer. Um, you will have to go to the font directory on your computer. Um, probably, if you're on Windows, it's in the Windows folder um, and then fonts. Um, but we're just going to use the um, basic 2.8 uh, Blender font for now. It's the same one as always. Um, and then we can adjust some of the settings. So we want to go to geometry. Um, and what we want, um, what, what I like, is the white text with a black outline. Um, 
it's very readable. Um, so it's really great for a logo or um, text going over a picture or something like that. Um, and it's it's something that you can put on almost any image um, and it will be readable. The same is would go for um, black text with a white outline. Um, that's generally very readable as well. Um, but I like the look of the uh, white text with a black outline. Um, so we'll start off um, by doing an extrude. And we don't need to go too far. Um, but what we do want is the bevel. And it's worth looking at, um, say, areas like this on the B, um, and areas in here, and on the H, and on the 2. So you want to make get as much of an outline as you can, because this is going to be the outline. Um, but you don't want to have too many of those artifacts. So if you keep going, you see, yeah, it's not in here in the B, and in the A, it's gone all weird. Uh, so that tells you that you've gone too far. Um, but that looks all right. There's a little bit of weirdness coming on, um, but that is going to be black. Um, it's going to be a solid color, um, so it's not going to be too much of an issue. Um, I don't think extruding will affect that too much. No, it won't. Um, changing the resolution can change things a bit. Um, I think I just accidentally added a keyframe. Um, but I don't find it's enough to justify um, changing from the default. So when its resolution is zero, it's basically um, giving as much resolution as it needs. Um, so if I hold shift and just pull that out a bit more, I'm just getting it so that, because this, this bit here tends to stick out a little bit, um, and that's the main, I think that's the main part that's causing us an issue. Um, so if we look from the front, we've got a fairly decent um, piece of outline there, so that should be fine. Um, this would be a good time if you wanted to do, um, say, a simple deform um, and do a bend um, and just change the axis. So if you wanted to have something a bit dynamic like that, um, change the angle rotate it, something like that. Um, not going to do that for this. Um, so I'll just leave that um, straight like that. So to get the white text with the black outline, um, we're going to you need to add um, different materials to different portions of the letters and the numbers. Um, so we're going to right click um, and click convert to mesh. And so now when we hit tab, we actually go into edit mode and we can see that we've got polygons uh, for all of this. I do like to keep the whole geometry for this um, in case you want to decide that later down the line you want to do something else with this text object which might involve rotating or doing something different. <laughs> um, then you can still use this. Um, I ended up um, for a different thing doing a logo like this and then, um, or doing a banner with this text, as well as using um, just a portion of it for creating a logo as well. Um, so it was helpful to have the whole thing intact, uh, rather than just deleting everything willy-nilly. Um, so we'll go into side mode and edit mode, and we'll go to wireframe. Um, and just left-click and box select all of these vertices here. Now we'll go to um, the material panel um, and we'll create a new material and we will um, so we're currently in um, the EV render engine and we're actually going to change this to workbench um, and we'll just set the lighting to flat as well uh, because we don't need any of that for this project specifically um, so um, under the material is now just a viewport display um, and we're just going to set it to full white and set the roughness there. Um, and if we hit assign, it's going to assign that material to that portion. And we're going to create a new one here as black. And we're going to set the roughness to one as well. And then I'll hit control I and that will invert the selection. So we've got just the front of the letters selected now. 
But if we hit the side there, we should, fingers crossed, get what we're looking for. So black text with a white outline. <laughs> I've done it around the wrong way. Um, so uh, we can actually select by material. So if we select uh, with this material, um, it's easy to hit a side there and then control I, select that one and a side. There we go. So it's now Alt A to deselect, A to select, and Alt A to deselect. So it's the way of thinking is um, A is to select as your primary function, and then when you press Alt, then that's the um, inverse of that function. Um, that's the uh, way to think about it so that you're not um, getting too confused. Uh, if you think that I need to do the opposite of the regular function, so Alt A to deselect, that's a that's, that's how I have found is a, an easier way to uh, figure things out. Anyway, so back on to this. So what I'd like to have is a um, rectangle that comes up and uh, goes all the way up to the top of the screen and then sits there and then spreads apart from both sides um, with colour to reveal a the text object. Um, after that, I will drop the uh, colored background um, so that it is transparent, and that will allow us um, to have the text over basically the initial portion of the video, which should have been uh, on the video that you're watching now. Um, in order to have everything lined up, we do want uh, this the middle of this text to be lined up with the center of the world. It just makes it a lot easier. Um, so what we can do uh, is if we go to the object, uh, go to set, set origin, and then we go origin to geometry, it should give us a center point. I'm finding in my experience, not too sure why, it might be a quirk with the text objects, um, it's not quite centered. Um, so I've got... I'll just control Z. I've got everything selected, so I'll just select that. And if I hit Alt G now, so that should be perfectly centered. But if you look, you've got one, two blender units, and then the exclamation mark is sitting outside of that second. And then if we look here, we've got one, two, and then this two is actually sitting on the inside of that second unit. So if I hit G and then X and move things and just do it by I, um, just looking at either end and getting them roughly on these unit lines, that's more central, uh, but apparently uh, Blender seems to think that this is the center of the geometry. Um, I found the same issue in 2.79, so I'm not too sure um, where that's coming from, but that's just something to be aware of. It's not going to be perfectly centered. Uh, but we can start creating uh, the other objects now. So if we hit Shift A and create a plane, um, and then go into Edit Mode, RX and 90, um, and this will be the um, initial plane that shoots up and then um, moves out. Um, or actually, no, we'll start off, sorry, um, we'll start off by doing... A part of that and I'll show you why it will just be a little bit easier um, so we we'll want to go to the camera see if we can select it not quite so we'll select it here um, right click and select and then press alt G no it's not working okay hold on um, I'm in edit mode okay so Alt G, Alt R, and then R, X, and negative 90. No, just 90. R, X, 90. Okay. So that's got our camera pointing the correct way. Um, and we'll go Y. And we'll also set the camera. Um, you can, it's up to you stylistically. If you want the text to sort of appear three-dimensional, um, so you can see extra... Uh, parts of the black on the letters that are towards the outside rather than the letters that are in the middle. That's a stylistic choice you could decide that you like. Um, for the sake of this one, though, we're going to go with orthographic. Now, that 
basically gives us a, a flat projection of everything um, and it helps us to keep things consistent especially when we're, we're sort of working in a, a 2d sort of situation uh, but utilizing some of the effects that uh, being in a 3d workspace um, allows us to do so um, i'm fairly happy with the size of the text um, we could scale it up um, just so that it fills the screen a bit better and then we're going to move this plane uh, along the Y and just have it make sure that it's in front of the text not too far in front because we're going to layer something else in front of it in a moment um, and then we will scale it up and I'm just scaling so that it covers the camera if we go into the camera view you'll see that it it's going outside the border of the camera um, and this means that it's basically going to be blocking the whole view of the camera. So now it's like there's a, a white screen. Um, if we go to the materials, we can set that to the white material. We can actually name that to white. Um, so now that's a white plane. Um, and I do want it to separate. I realize I was just using hand gestures that you can't see. To separate from the middle and then each side to go. Um, left or right based on what side it is so to achieve that it's quite easy uh, we'll control R and left click so that's our uh, basically a loop cut and then I'm going to right click to cancel that transform and that will put it in the dead center uh, now if we hit V to tear and that tears the um, the mesh and then right click to cancel that transform what that's done is created two separate polygon planes um, but because these vertices and these edges are exactly aligned um, and we're just using like a flat lighting system, you're not going to see any difference in the shading. So it's just going to appear to be one perfectly flat, flat, uh, flat plane. So we'll go to the shape keys now um, and we will animate, uh, basically get the animation set up. So um, in object mode, um, you can see here because it says object mode, um, we create the first one, which is the basis, and then we add another shape key, and we'll call this open. And then tab into edit mode. And um, an easy way to select everything that's one thing is to hover over it and press L. Um, alternatively, because this is just two single polygons, you can just use the polygon select. Now I'm going to press G and X. And um, just keep an eye. Um, up here, you'll see uh, that there's a value that is changing. Um, so it's, we're up to almost four. And it's outside of the camera. Um, so we're just going to go G, X, and then four. Um, the reason for that is to then, we can select this one to go G, X, minus four. And that will now they will move consistently. So we go back to object mode and we can adjust the value on this and you see that they move apart at the same time. And that's, I mean, that's the very, very basics of a text reveal. Um, to um, get a object that I can have the same timing and the same um, split, I'm actually going to uh, duplicate that. And I'm going to G and then Y and move it slightly in front and we'll give it a different material new and we'll just give it a blue color um, and assign that so it's blue there we go so now we've got a um, a blue object um, we will go to the basis and then um, what we will do in edit mode is we will select this edge and this edge and an S and then X and scale them right in and we can just sort of this is how we will decide how thick we want that bar to be and I think that will do um, and then we will create one more plane. Uh, 
um, and rotate x 90. Um, now whilst we're working, because we've got these other planes in front, it can be difficult to see what we're doing. Um, so we can just hide those first two planes. Uh, so I've created this plane actually inside this object. So just going to delete that, delete all those vertices. Make sure in object mode, add in the plane. Um, hide that one. And we do want this one to be behind the text. RX90. G, Y, and then move that behind the text. Um, so we'll create a sort of a diagonal, um, basically this line here. We'll create a diagonal along that, and then we'll separate the sections moving in those directions away, um, and it will just be an interesting way to do things. Um, so setting up similar to before, scaling out, scale and X. Um, we, for the sake of this one and making it look interesting um, we'll give it there's that blue material there it is uh, we'll give it that blue material and then uh, tab into edit mode and go to vertices um, and press K for knife and then when it goes green over um, the vertice here you can left click and then move over to here and it will snap onto that vertice, what it should do. It's not really playing for me today, but that's an easy fix. So we'll just left click there and press enter. Um, now I'm just gonna double check by zooming in. Yeah, I can see that these two vertices um, are separate and I wanted them to just be one. Um, so I'm just gonna box select there and um, I don't want to mirror, I want to merge. So Alt M and then just, um, don't want them to merge at center. So I want them to merge at last. So the second one that I selected, um, cause that's where the corner initially should be. Um, and then just like the other plane that does separate, um, we'll select those two opposite opposing vertices, press V and then right click. Um, to cancel the transformation. So now we've got a plain blue black ground background that um, we have set up to be um, animatable. And we'll create a couple of shape keys. Again, we'll call this one open. Um, and um, select that. And then we will do G, X, um, 4, and enter. And then G, Y. Four, nope, sorry, G Z four, um, and we want it in the negative, so that it moves in that direction, and then so here we go G X negative four, and then enter, and then G Z four, so it moves up, and so these two have now moved apart. So when we come to um, object mode and play with the value, you see that it slides apart. So we can create um, the motion. That we're looking for in the motion graphics um, fairly easily um, just by sort of manipulating some of the quirks of being in a 3d workspace um, as far as the main animation um, it's not too hard um, so we will on uh, frame one we'll move this down and go press i and location and let's give it say 10 frames per action um, so we'll you need to right click on the timeline currently. Um, it might be a left click soon, I'm not too sure. Um, there's some things that they're sort of thinking about um, development wise. Either way, right click to choose a frame um, and then make sure that this is just above and below the camera. Um, and then we'll eye and location. So now we've got, if you hold right click and slide, um, we've got a um, appearing or a insertion sort of it, it's coming into view um, and then um, we can give it 10 frames come here so select the open where it says value we'll insert keyframe so it's zero and then come to so goes up 
it holds or well, we could actually no let's make it a quick snappy one so here so on frame 10 when it's um, up the um, value for open is zero and then here we'll change the value to one and um, we will replace that keyframe um, so now we've got a animation of it coming up and opening and at the same time, so frame 10 and then to frame 20, um, if we um, animate the shape key on the big white guy, uh, insert keyframe and then value to one and insert keyframe, what we should find is they move together and if we do select everything, um, there's no part of the white plane sticking out underneath uh, the blue one. Um, which is very good um, because that creates a very seamless sort of motion. Um, if you are working op with objects um, that you haven't duplicated from, which is um, part of why I did that duplication, because um, it leaves um, the animation um, data there, um, and it's, we've just basically changed the shape of the object. Um, if you're doing that, then you're gonna uh, with sorry with separate objects that have slightly different say amounts. So um, this edge here um, is the white edge and the blue edge, and they're both moving four units either way um, through the same timing. Um, if you don't have that convenience, um, then you'll need to go through each frame. Um, the first time that I worked out this sort of um, technique, um, I hadn't done that. I had made each object separately and just sort of moved them by hand out as far as they needed to be um, which gave them slightly different values so when it came to the animation even though the timing was the same um, they moved different amounts um, and so then I needed to go in frame by frame and move the values and adjust the values so that things weren't overlapping um, in a bad way but either way we've got so we've got the in coming up and revealing the text. Um, so next we can, um, we'll hold for 10 frames and then uh, we'll do the animation on the blue background and then insert the keyframe. Um, so now we've got, if we scrub through, comes up opens and that opens and this opening will then be onto the video background um, so we're basically set up to render now um, if you want to do a fade out on the text I would recommend fading out your clip uh, on the timeline when you're doing your video video editing um, which I believe you can still do in Blender um, I have stopped doing so much video editing in Blender um, just because it can't handle or for me, it didn't handle um, big, long video files um, as well as I would have liked. Um, so um, I've found myself moving to um, like DaVinci Resolve. I found is fairly easy to figure out how to use. Um, so um, you just set the transparency in that and um, you just fade it out, basically. Um, so having, having a baked-in fade out would give you slightly less control um, and it is worth also mentioning that when um, I'm exporting this as a video I'm not actually exporting a video file um, or rendering um, what we'll do is um, what I'll do is render um, go to sort of the rendering output um, we'll do it as a PNG um, so that will give us a series of PNG files, um, which are just image files. And then I found it very helpful for that because I could then pick out this frame specifically um, and use that as a hold. Um, and it allowed me to lengthen the um, introduction animation um, for a different project that I was doing because um, I had um, a voiceover and an introduction a um, bit of music and stuff and the timing didn't quite fit as I was expecting it to fit some things had changed in the project 
and having the ability to just cut basically cut the video file, insert a still image that was already created, um, and just time that out for the extra bit that I needed, um, and then resuming the animation afterwards was very, very helpful. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, it's one of the benefits of using a, a PNG image sequence. Um, now we do want to make sure um, that we've got the transparency settings correct and the color settings correct. So we'll sort that out now. Um, so we need to, uh, I believe it's under the rendering panel. We just need to figure out where everything is. Um, lighting. Okay, so here we're at the render settings. We're in Workbench, and then under Film, um, we've got um, anti-aliasing samples and stuff, and then Alpha Mode. We don't want Sky. We want Transparent. So when you hit Render, if you've got, say, this blue in the way, um, it won't be transparent. But if there's then nothing, say, in this frame, the portions of the frame, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the portions of the frame where there's no text and there's no other objects will be completely transparent. So um, that's a, a helpful thing to have when you're overlaying this um, video over a different video. Um, and then we want to, I believe that's in this one, um, we want to go to color management. Um, give me a moment. I'm still learning where everything is. Ah, it's in, it's in the render tab as well. So color management. Um, by default, it is in Filmic. Um, Filmic is great for doing realistic stuff. Um, or even semi-realistic, it gives you nice colors and it gives you really nice lighting. Um, but for this specific use case, uh, it's no good. Um, when you do test renders, um, you'll notice that your whites aren't quite white. Uh, they're actually more of a gray. Uh, so if we go to default, um, you'll find um, that it, that fixes that specific problem. Um, and then you don't need to change any other settings. Um, so, um, I will, uh, I've done a couple <laughs> of tests of doing this tutorial and with Blender 2.8, there's a few things that are causing my image, uh, my viewport capture to, um, not work quite right. Um, it doesn't like when there's multiple windows popping up for some reason. Um, so, um, I'm not going to hit render right now because it's going to just going to cause things to freak out, but I will play over this part, um, the final animation so we can see that the colors are all correct and everything like that. Um, and if it's not, then you will hear from me again in a moment. If not, um, if you like this tutorial, um, give it a like, um, and share it around and show your friends. Um, if you want to see more in the future, um, then hit subscribe, um, and I will see you next time.